Welcome to Food for Thought Podcast, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. Today's episode is No More Excuses or From Excusitarian to Vegan. Before we begin, my name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com and on social media. You can find my books wherever books are sold, and you can join me in my online cooking classes. This podcast is possible because of the support of listeners like you. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting it. You can join other supporters by going to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Thank you so much in advance. So in this episode, I thought I would address just a couple of the typical excuses I hear people have when it comes to becoming vegan. See if any of this resonates with you. If it does, see if my response to these excuses helps you in any way, or if it's something you can communicate to others who struggle. So I'm not going to lie, I've heard every excuse in the book from people who have the instinct to stop eating animal flesh and fluids, meat, dairy, and eggs, but are so attached to their animal products, as I once was, I get it, that they create these blocks to making the changes they themselves want to make. So number one, some people are skeptical. Having been completely disempowered by the modern medical system, many people believe that their genes have already determined their fate, right? So rather than believe that they have a part to play in their health, they've made scapegoats out of their ancestors, well, heart disease runs in my family, and simply throw up their hands. To them, I say, try it for 30 days, you have nothing to lose, Some people say, well, I don't eat a lot of meat, dairy, and eggs, so I wouldn't benefit from taking this stuff out of my diet completely. In the 20 plus years I've been doing this work, I'm not exaggerating when I say I have never met one person. I have never heard one person say, I do eat a lot of meat, dairy, and eggs. (laughs) Everyone has the perception of themselves that they don't eat a lot of meat, dairy, and eggs. First of all, I have to ask, compared to what? Compared to how much you could eat? Uh, Compared to how much they ate 100 years ago? Like, what barometer are we using when we say that? Part of the problem is that our perception of ourselves and our habits isn't always aligned with reality, right? The truth is, you don't know how much you eat until you stop. You don't know how much you eat meat, dairy, and eggs until you stop. You don't know how much TV you watch until you stop. You don't know how much alcohol you drink until you stop. You don't know how much you complain. I know this is what I experience. Until you stop, until you make an effort to stop, then you recognize what your habits are. Then you recognize how much how much you eat or how much you complain or how much TV you watch. And that's one of the benefits of, for instance, the 30-day vegan challenge. You stop long enough to see your dietary habits very clearly and up close. You stop long enough to realize how habitually you reach for something without thinking about it. Changing your behavior for 30 days gives you the opportunity to reprogram your habits. It gives you the opportunity, first of all, to recognize your habits and then to reprogram your habits. So to those of you who say you don't think you eat that much meat, dairy, and eggs, I say, well, great. It means it will be that much easier for you to stop completely for 30 days, right? Some people think they're too old to make changes. This is another excuse I hear. They resign themselves to the inevitable diseases and medications associated with getting old. And so these excusitarians would say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I disagree. The reality is it doesn't matter how old we are when we decide to make changes. Our food habits were ingrained in us by the time we were about five years old, and we carry these habits with us into adulthood. So it doesn't matter if you're 30 or 40 or 18 or 80. A habit is a habit is a habit. The behaviorists who say it takes three weeks to change a habit, 
they don't make qualifications based on age. They don't say it takes three weeks to change a habit if you're 25 years old, but three months to change a habit if you're 70. It's the same no matter how old you are. You just have to be willing to cast off some familiar behaviors and perceptions and try on some new ones that will then become those familiar behaviors and perception. So whether you're looking to stop eating meat, dairy, and eggs, or even cut down, the benefits are manifold. You know this. That's why so many people have the desire and the inclination and the instinct to stop eating meat, dairy, and eggs. You know that the benefits are there. It's the healthiest thing we can do for our bodies to put in life-giving foods rather than life-taking foods. That's the difference between plant foods and animal products. It's the least resource-intensive thing we can do in terms of the growing of crops. I mean, it's the least in- intensive crops is uh, plants. Uh, and of course, all of the other detrimental effects of consuming and raising animals, of course, global warming because of methane, the use of land, the runoff from all of the waste from these animals. And you know what I mean when I say that. I mean, we're talking about animals. These are living beings who are defecating and urinating every single day. Where do you think that goes? And especially because we're raising so many, the effects are huge. Plants, they don't defecate. <laughs> they they actually feed one another. The plants go back into the soil. The soil feeds the plants, et cetera, et cetera. It really, truly is a cycle that we can support. So for the environment, for the earth, if that's what you care about. And of course, for the animals themselves, we know that it's the best thing we can do is to not bring animals into this world only to kill them. This is an industry that is defined by and characterized by violence. So it's the best thing we could do for animals. And it's the best thing we could do for our fellow humans who we pay to do that killing. And they become desensitized to suffering. They become desensitized to their own compassion. So because of all of these reasons, and of course, there are many more, you know what to do. So I'm just here to tell you, go with your instinct to do the right thing. Don't let the marketing arms of the meat, dairy, and egg industries make you complacent. Don't let someone else determine your values and your behavior. You can do this. You're not alone. There are many support systems out there. So find them and stay close to them. And of course, I'm grateful to be one of them for you. So thank you for connecting with me. You can find more support at 30dayveganchallenge.com. I have both the 30 Day Vegan Challenge book and the 30 Day Vegan Challenge online program. You will find lots of support and resources in this podcast. We are celebrating our 15th year of this podcast, so there's lots to find here. You can find more at joyfulvegan.com and, of course, in my book, The Joyful Vegan and my cookbook. So there's lots there to sink your teeth into. Find support. You can do this. No more excuses. Don't do nothing because you can't do everything. Do something, anything for the animals. This is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Good luck and thanks for listening. 